Gee, dog, word up. We're Washington. Weed's legal. Um, fuck. Most of you who follow me on Instagram already know this is old news. Been saying it for a while. Same thing with Facebook. But I don't think I've actually said it on YouTube. So, um, I mean, it's been a few years since I've talked about this pump and, and shit like that. So, I wanted to let you people know that I've found some shit out since then. Um, I mean, back then I had already known it wasn't not made to pump hydrocarbons. So, I kind of uh, giddy up and told me that right when I got it. And I actually didn't buy this. This actually came with that old Bogart prototype that dude had sent me before they even had a name to call their systems. But um, this and then the hoses and shit like that. So, this isn't just Bogart. I mean, there's a whole bunch of companies. I mean, there's a whole bunch of systems that people run where they use these. I don't know if the other companies actually recommend them or not. But I figure, I mean, I'd already made the post from Appion explaining how these are not made to pump those. Um, and still, I mean, some people thought that was new. That was actually a really, really old safety release. Or I forgot what it was called. Uh, the safety announcement or whatever. But first things I want to talk about, these hoses. These are fucking fail. They're going to eventually start breaking down and you're going to start smoking rubber. Um, second, any recovery pump, not just the Appion, I'm talking about any recovery pump that has copper tubing, you no, fail. Even this can capper right here. You don't want your butane going through any fucking copper. Stainless steel and PTFE. Keep it simple. Buna, you know, shit like that. When you go and look and it doesn't react to nonpolar shit. But silicone, fail. These hoses, fail. Copper, fail. Um, I haven't looked up this dry filter, but I'm sure that's probably making poison too. Not sure. But um, maybe. There's uh, other, other pumps. There's like the Care Saver. People hate on that because they don't want mineral oil. They're afraid that somehow mineral oil is going to get into the lines. And then even though you're recovering with it, it's not like you're going to, you know, go recover that shit. Oh, I guess with, with uh, some downstem or some siphon tanks, I guess you could still pull that out and have it be in your next run. But yeah. Uh, you can run those on hemp seed oil. I mean, you don't have to use a fucking care saver. There's a few other pumps. There's two on Alibaba that uh, one of them is scary. It looks kind of like the Appion, but it's tilted back a little bit. Says it's made for butane and propane. Just so you know, butane is R600. Isobutane is R600A. And propane is R290. They don't actually say propane and butane and shit like that. So that's what they're called. Like R410A, that's not butane, that's not propane. Pump the shit out of it with this. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to gift this to some HVAC technician because that's really what it's made for. I've had it all this time to kind of show people, yeah, I've had this for over two years and I never turned the fucker on. Um, kind of sketched me out when I got it and uh, what do you know? Instincts turn out to be right. Um, there's a couple other, there's one that looks like an HVAC pump, but it still has these same copper things. And I've seen people upgrade from this to that. And I don't even know the name of the pump. But anything with copper, like I said, fail tech. Um, pretty much what I'm thinking, and if it's if not that not the cheap one Alibaba, but the bigger one, the one that looks like it's made out of stainless steel versus plastic. Um, either that one, or a Haskell pneumatic pump is what I'll end up running when I run an active system. But I think I should mention, and this is something I think I need to do in a one straight unedited raw clip which like all my shit is where i'll start a recovery and show you guys that i recover seven pounds of imbutane in 20 fucking minutes to minus five give me five more minutes and i'll get that shit to minus 15 or min minus 20 with no recovery pump that's just dry ice and tanks the more propane that i have in the system the faster it recovers so really do i need to poison my solvent just to cut a couple minutes off that not really but I figured I'd put that out there. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are using those pumps that watch my videos. And hey, I mean, if you use those pumps, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't hit your oil. I'm just saying there, you can use something a lot better. Hell, you can chuck the fucking pump and do your runs just as fucking fast, to be honest with you. But yeah, I figured I would make that announcement on YouTube or say that on YouTube because there's so many people that... Uh, either don't follow my Instagram or don't have Instagram or what. But usually when it comes to more, um, I don't want to say smart shit. I mean, there's some, there's some shit on YouTube where if you watch my videos, there's some old shit where I'd say, and I don't know that I, I might have, I have a video. I think I took it down, but it's showing the Bogart and explaining the closed loop system. 
and I and I show that pump in there. I don't know if I recommend them or not, or I don't know if I don't say they're bad, but all I know is uh, I don't think I've said it, at least in a while, that uh, any of those hoses, any of that copper insides, any of uh, the pumps that aren't made to pump that, you shouldn't be really putting flammable shit through them like that. It's, I mean, if so, why not just open blast? I mean, the kind, if people, that's what I don't get. Like people who open up their systems while there's still butane in it. You know, I'm talking about to pour it out while they've still got liquid fucking butane in it. I'm not talking about pouring out oil that's not purged. I'm talking about pouring out liquid butane where it's cold and there's some oil dissolved in it. They're opening up the system while it's still under pressure. Doing that or running the system with like these kind of pumps, it it shows the only reason they're running the closed loop system is to save money on solvent versus safety. I mean, I got the thing for safety and it was a saving solvent was an awesome side effect of it. So doing stuff that makes it still as dangerous as open blasting kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. Um, I mean, honestly, I'd rather open blast with power five than run my research grade solvents through fucking copper tubing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I thought I'd uh, bring that up because like I said before, there's a lot of people running those pumps. Maybe they know, maybe they think it's a rumor. I don't know, but it's kind of time, you know, back when, uh, back in the moonshine times when people, instead of using a worm, they were using car radiators and they were giving everyone lead poisoning. Well, same thing here. You cut corners, you poison people. And I don't know what you're poisoning them with or what not like that. I just know that you shouldn't be having the fucking shit come in contact. Copper shouldn't have to come in contact with fucking hoses that aren't made to carry nonpolar solvents like that. So, yeah, just like why you don't blast with PVC, but since it's a closed loop, people go, oh, shit, it's okay to run fail tech shit. Why don't we just make a closed loop out of PVC? Fuck it. Here we go. Enough ranting about those pumps. I'm going to take a dab of um, Royal Chem, which was not ran with nasty hoses and nasty pumps. So, cheers. My hole was plugged in my carb cap. So there we go. Just wanted to dab some oil. <coughs> Talk about some oil. Um, like I said, the Haskell pneumatic pumps run on your air compressor. If you have a good ass air compressor that you can hold a big tank, you can hold a lot of compressed air. <coughs> uh, speaking of that, Extracted, they had gotten this big ass tank for their compressor. And I'll admit it, I thought it, I thought it was a solvent tank at first, too. And then after they had, this was before they had actually shown a picture of a pneumatic pump or talked about the music of pneumatic pumps. <coughs> <coughs> but once they showed it, and uh, they showed how much pressure that thing held and shit like that, it's like, oh, that's what that shit is. So, <coughs> so yeah, if you've seen like an Eden Labs high flow CO2 system, you hear that. Tuka, 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 tuka. Each one of those is uh, the piston, I guess, going in and out um, to create the actual motion, which creates the suction for those pumps versus having it go in some electric ass pump, something like that. And I've even seen the Haskells with people using copper adapters on them. So <coughs> <coughs> it's not like everyone's fucking perfect, but... I figure if there's something you can, like, here's how I look at it. Pump that's like 300 bucks or zero pump, which is cost nothing for the same fucking thing. I don't know. Maybe it's people using those tiny ass hoses and maybe that's why running passive, it's so damn slow, but use a quarter inch hose or a half inch hose. Oh my God. You don't need the goddamn pump. But if you do need a pump and you're doing, I guess, I guess... The way I should say it, and these are my opinions. I mean, you do what you want, but this is how I feel. I've, if you're on the scale that you absolutely need to have a recovery pump, then you can afford the proper shit. Just like, just like people who t uh, say they have to purge, they can't purge longer than two days because they're, they're doing so many runs. Get more than two ovens. Holy shit. Um, 
the way, I mean, it's not like I'm running more than 10 pounds a week. So two ovens is fine. I can purge for four to 10 days if I want to and not have to worry about taking, taking some shit out to make room. If I was running 20 pounds a week, guess what? I'd have four ovens. I wouldn't still be using the same two ovens. <coughs> <coughs> so that's how I feel about that. Um, and then <coughs> I think I'll touch on the Cascade ovens that read the parts per million of the gas in the air. Some people think that it's measuring the parts per million of the butane in your oil. That's not fucking true. And the only way you can actually use that feature is if you only have one slab in there. Because if you go and throw another slab in there, it's going to be creating more gas in the air. So it's not really going to be able to be something you can go by. But if you do use one of the big ass ovens for one slab at a time, <laughs> I'm laughing at you, but you are being able to use that feature. I was actually thinking about this last night. It would be fucking sick if they made a .9 oven or something that's smaller than one cubic foot, but it wasn't that. It wasn't the size of the one cubic foot ones. It was small and flat, big enough to fit one rack that goes in the big ovens. So you can have this one oven that you finish your slabs in that has that PPM meter, or maybe you have a couple of them stacked. But to have an oven that takes multiple slabs... It, you can't use that meter. I mean, fuck, you're constantly having shit with, how do you know which slabs of gas coming from, you know? Unless you take them all out and, fig and pull a vac and, you know, it just, I don't know. But I figured I would ask you guys, do any of you guys uh, have that one? And I know it's like an upgraded one. It's not just the regular Cascade Tech Ovens. It's like an upgrade. So let me know about that. Let me know how much it costs to upgrade it to that. And I'm wondering... <coughs> I'm thinking I could just go and buy a um, $100 gas meter from the place where I get the fucking butane prax there and then go ahead and put that shit in the oven. But I don't know if it'll fuck it up or not. But Versus going, oh, well, let's, let's mark up the oven another $1,000 so you can put a fucking $50 thing in there that you got. So, yeah, I think I'll go buy one retail. Some of you might be looking at this. And thinking, what is that? Yankees? Brett Baseball Yankees? No, man. I mean, I used to like the Yankees after they took A-Rod from us. And they had Derek Jeter and shit, which was awesome. Because Derek Jeter is so awesome that when A-Rod switched to the Yankees, uh, he couldn't even play the position that he played. He had to change positions because they weren't going to have Jeter. And, you know, I mean, he's shortstop already. But I made this, <laughs> and I had a Yankees hat that I used to wear. But it got stolen by these black kids when I was in a fight. What sucks is every time you get in a fight and some of your shit falls off, the people that are watching the fight take it. What's up with that? So, that's what you get for not having homies around when you're fucking getting your ass kicked anyways. So, here's this. Um, it's a full fusion. If you know the Jamie Burris pendant, the slab pendants, which I lost mine or it auto-butted or something. I don't know where it went. But, yeah, it looks like a slab's hanging from your neck all Swiss cheesed out. What that is, is she cuts up a bunch of pieces of glass and has them touching like a slab with the Swiss cheese holes and stuff, puts them in the kiln, heats it up to like 1,050, and they melt together. I just said 1,050. I don't know what temperature it was. I actually forgot what temperature this is. You can see there's still fucking bottom of the kiln stuck to my glass here, but it was a white piece of glass, and then I cut a red square and a blue square and then on top of that and I use Elmer's glue to glue them all together you can see there's my part of my in you can see each little piece still you can even see it up here for his helmet whatnot looking all weird and this shit melts together and then I put this um, copper tape around it that's probably lining the inside of some idiot's clothes system I'm just kidding you put this copper tape around it, and then you use flux, which I think he calls it flux. I think it's just borax in the water. But you have touched that onto it, and pretty much the solder sticks to the copper tape real good. So, and oh, before any of that, you have to sand down the edges of this to make it all nice and smooth. And then uh, the tape sticks to it, and then you can solder everything together. And I wanted to, I still remember this. I made this thing 10 years ago, and I still remember it. I wanted this to be one piece like this. What happened is one of these broke in the middle. I'm like, fuck. So I went ahead and made a cut on the other one so they would do that. But really, I wanted it to be like a regular frame. So, yeah, that's my, um, had to be more than 20 pieces. And I pretty much nailed it. And we also blew some glass in there. And But quickly, that program got shut down because people were making meth pipes. 
because we live in Bremerton, and this was Bremerton High School. So it was like you either smoke weed um, or you smoke weed and you take ecstasy pills or you do cocaine or you um, smoke pills or smoke heroin or you're the other half of the druggies, which is methamphetamine. So there's like different kinds of drugs and like half of them is tweakers. And then there's like the other splits of drugs, which totally got into that from my whole public safety announcement. So sorry, guys. But yeah. Um, and I really apologize. I forgot your name uh, who, sent, who sent this to me. I mean, maybe if you want it back, that'd probably be the nice thing for me to do is just give it back to you. Because, I mean, I, I'm sure I at least helped you sell one, one fucking Bogart. Um, from doing my things. I mean, I'm sure that's why you sent it to me, um, was so I could, you know, show it and use it, which I never did, but let's say I used it, and then people were seeing me have success with it, and then they, then they went and bought one. I think that was what you're trying to do. And I don't know if it worked out enough. I don't know if you got enough people to buy your shit, so the least I can do is give you this pump back. But um, I, I don't know, my because doing that, that means I know it's going to go to use to making more poison BHO. So, yeah, man. Maybe if someone took this all apart and lined it with uh, 316 stainless steel shit, but uh, I just, I highly doubt it. Um, there's no reason to be u using these pumps. I mean, so you can, if, you're, if you need a pump, you don't need something that's this low class and not for making hydrocarbon extracts or even pumping hydrocarbon refrigerants. So... That's enough on that. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of people making a whole bunch of no sense making arguments as to why it's okay and it's cool. Like, uh, so what, uh, man? It's like fucking, it's either that or they're going to be smoking some open blast shit. That's probably better than yours. But they're probably going to be smoking some open blast shit that someone fucking, you know, sneezed on. Versus leech shit from my copper and leech shit from my nasty rubber hoses. But yeah. So, I actually was, originally when we got the Sweet Leaf, I was going to run this on this. The whole, the original design, I guess, fuck, I'll just ramble and go take another fucking dab. Turn this into a video. So the whole design that I was going to go by for the, um, for de-waxing, and I, I sent it to Bogart, I sent it to Sweetleaf, and I sent it to Lou Swan from Sub-Zero. So